Well, the massive omnibus bill was killed, and a growing number of D.C. lawmakers have pledged to walk away from the highly controversial earmark process. However, my next guest says there are just, those are just two of the small, small examples of a system-wide spending problem that continues to plague Washington. Don't I know it. Joe Diogardi is a former Republican congressman from New York and the author of the new book, Unaccountable Congress. It doesn't add up. No, it doesn't, sir. And you have Thank an you, Tracy. background. Yes, very unusual in Washington if you're an elected official, I can tell you that. Well, you were the first CPA elected to Congress. First practicing CPA, meaning that I came out of an accounting firm after 22 years and ran for Congress. 22 years out of Arthur Anderson. And right. what made you decide to go down there? Did you feel like you can make a difference? Well, I was in my mid-40s, and I had a wonderful experience because my firm was hired by the Treasury Department for the bailout of New York City in 75. So you might say I got my baptism by fire on the way large governmental entities hide things. And then my firm did something very interesting. They volunteered to do a prototype statement called the Consolidated Financial Statements of the United States of America, 1978. We passed it on to the Treasury, 1982. Guess what the first thing they did was? Throw it out? No, they took, <laughs> off, they took off the liability for Social Security that we oh. put on the balance sheet. Oh, and they put it off balance sheet? Footnote. Right. So this is the problem. We're not using the same accounting system that the Securities and Exchange Commission imposes on publicly traded companies. Why? Protect shareholders. When are we going to protect taxpayers? But it's interesting you say that because the New York Stock Exchange would throw them off for improper reporting, throw them off the exchange, that is, and yet we go far back. I mean, the Resolution Trust during the savings and loan right. scandal, perfect example of, you would call it gimmick, I mean, gimmick accounting. And, and, and when they bailed it out, guess what they did? Off budget. Right. It was such an extraordinary amount, $500 billion. They said, we're not putting that through the annual deficit. We'll just float the bonds, add it to the national debt. So what ha has to happen? I mean, everyone comes on and says we need more transparency. But there, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's debits and credits, isn't it, at the end well, of the day? Well, it, it, it's more than tra It's accountability. It's objectivity. It's independence and transparency. All the things, and you were an accountant, that accountants are known for. Uh, you know, look at independence. We have no independent audits, no, we do not. except maybe some of these government-sponsored enterprises like the post office. But we put out a statement. In fact, it was just put out last week. Read what the Controller General says about it. They still can't audit it because the books of the military are not in shape to be audited yet. So there's not a clean opinion. Now, don't you think we should be bringing in a consortium of large accounting firms to say, why don't we do what Arthur Anderson did and back in 1975, so that we could bail out New York City. Is this purposeful, do you think? Do you think they are purposely trying to keep things from the American people? Well, isn't it easier to get reelected if you can give the people good news? Huh? What, what, what did the Romans do? What did the emperors do? <laughs> they kept people in the Colosseum, make them happy. So we're giving good news, people are getting reelected, and we're keeping off the books a huge amount of the liabilities that we're incurring, but have to be paid for. Well, I mean, this is, you're absolutely right about that. You know, they took Enron down for special purpose entities off balance sheet accounting. And now we have government sponsored enterprises. And we are doing the exact Fannie same Mae, thing. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Yeah, exactly. Off balance sheet. That never hits. So why then? Why don't we get more accountants down there? Well, accountants don't seem to want to run <laughs> for public <laughs> office. Because they're I mean, smart. We'll have, to, we'll have to convince them that this is a public service that they could perform. But we need to engage the process. Even if we don't get more accountants elected, uh, we need to bring to the public sector, many of the things we do in the private sector, and one of them is independent audits. audit audits. And one another thing is generally accepted accounting principles. If it's good enough for the Securities and Exchange Commission, why shouldn't the government adopt the same system? Well, of course, auditors are taking a beating these days with the whole fall of Lehman and everything uh, that has happened through the financial crisis. You rewrote this book, though. This book came out in 1992. It just came out again. And everything I forecasted in 92 happened. So is that why it came out in 2010 again? Well, because I needed to update what happened to make it worse in the intervening period. Those 18 years not only fulfilled what I said about the potential demise of Fannie Mae and Fannie, Fannie Mac, uh, Fannie and Freddie, mm -hmm. uh, but in Chapter 4, entitled The Big Apple and Washington, One Bailout After the Other, I made the statement that if we continue to do what we're doing, spending money we don't have, borrowing from countries we don't trust, in those days Japan, today China, that who's going to bail us out? The United States of America. 
And we're heading there. We are unsustainable at the rate that we are spending today. So we need to call on the CPAs of the world to run in the next election. You're going to run again? We need to educate the people, and that's what this book is about, and that's what Truth in Government, the foundation I set up, is about. I hope they're going to watch that, www.truthingovernment.org, O-R-G. Am I going to run again? The door is always open. Uh, I don't have to make that decision right now. Well, we need more CPAs down there. Sir. Options are good Congress, in life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy. Congressman Joe Diogardi and his book is Uncountable Congress. It's it on Amazon.com. 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 Yep. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas.